Yeah, I'm Joe. Uh, I started a project which I called the Reliquary Project um, with the uh, University of Leicester, um, which came about because I was doing some work um, in some caves in Nottingham, um, and I kept coming across animal bones just kind of kicking around in the dust. Um, and I got interested in this idea about rubbish and that a lot of what archaeologists do is dealing with rubbish and stuff left over and thrown away, um, which then becomes quite interesting. Um, and if anybody doesn't know, a reliquary is, um, well, sort of a Christian me medieval fascination with um, relics, and they would create these amazing, beautiful boxes um, relic, which are the reliquaries to, to hold the bones and the relics inside and they'd be highly decorated and um, lots of gold and maybe tell the story of the saint whose bones are inside but what's actually inside the boxes is just kind of bits of fragments of bone and bits of rubbish and cloth so kind of dusty things um, and it got me interested in this whole idea of value and how we value things and that actually we're, we're dealing with rubbish which doesn't really have any value but once that's taken out of its contacts and we start thinking about what the bones can tell us, um, they, the value of them change and I was looking at bones in museums which are in beautiful display boxes and they're kind of almost venerated so they have a different kind of value and they become a relic which is different from a bit of rubbish. So my whole project was kind of thinking about this idea about um, how we change the value of objects depending on how we use them or what we do with them. So um, I, I started working in the bone lab, um, and really just looking at animal bones, not human bones at all, so that's a whole different value based on human bones, so thinking about animal bones. Um, and working with the ar a zoo archaeologists there and just talking to them about how they think about bones and how they use them and, and uh, how they feel about them and, and questions that they don't usually get asked. How do you feel about your bones? Hmm. Um, so, <laughs> so just that idea of taking a bone out of context and that actually once it's isolated and just studied as an object on its own, this is kind of an idea about a reliquary that you know, is very, it's sort of floating in the middle, it's always displaced, but it has this very elaborate gold frame which kind of makes you want to look at it slightly differently, maybe you think of it differently just because of the way it's displayed, um, not really change the actual object itself. Um, and of course the sacrum is, comes from the word for sacred and has been thought of as the holy bone. It's, just, it's sort of weird mythology around some of these. So um, I find that quite interesting. And I started um, looking at, this is a fish bone, which is probably about that big. Uh, looking at some fish bones, and they're very, very thin, so they're kind of translucent. So shining a light behind them to see, see them better, and photographing very, very close up, so you get these large images. And they are almost like religious icon images, they've kind of got this halo and it kind of makes you think of them in a very different way. From these little tiny scrappy bits, you suddenly start seeing what's inside the bone. Um, and there's a, there's a piece over there as well. Um, so there's a whole series of the, um, the fish bones. But I suppose what I wanted to get across in this talk mainly is the way that I work is I'm trying to, I'm, I'm using making art as a way of thinking through some of these ideas um, and there's a dialogue going on between me and the artwork so I'm making the work but the work's telling me what to do next and it, it kind of continues on like this that I get ideas from what I'm making so it's a thought process really um, and a lot of the time I don't actually know what I'm going to make and I, we touched on this in the discussion yesterday that you're actually making it to try and find something out or to find where you're going so there's, there's very little plan to my work. Um, this one is um, just thinking about the bone as a material, and if you change the material, does that make us value it differently? So I started casting bones, um, putting bones, gold leaf on bones, making bones out of ceramics. This one is a cast um, into clear resin, which is very glass-like, so this is probably only about that big. Um, so it looks quite glass-like, and I kind of made these sort of almost jewellery-like boxes to put them in, velvet, and it sort of glints and it look, suddenly looks precious and delicate. So again, it kind of, does it change the way you value what it is? Once it's in a display box like that, it kind of looks quite a special thing, but it's actually just a bit of 
um, a bit of sheep bone I picked up on a field. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, and then I started doing these big drawings. This is this, is this one over here, um, which came about from being at an excavation with some archaeologists and the zoo archaeologists there. I said, oh, I've seen some bones in that river there. They're just there. I was looking at them, well, where? Just there. And I'm like, I could not see them. I couldn't see them. Um, so there's something about, you know, somebody who's trained to see these things, who does this all the time, can see something I can't see, can see these bones in the landscape. So I started drawing landscapes made of bones, really. And this is just a drawing that, that's completely out of my head. I just kind of started and carried on, and it told me where to go. Um, just thinking about the shapes of those bones which led me on to another one, this is called Bone Forest. <laughs> so it's kind of almost like, well, there's so many bones coming out of the ground all the time. It's just endless and goes on and on. It's kind of the whole land is made of bones. <laughs> so um, yeah, here's the fish bone, which is over there, you can see it in detail. Um, so again, this fish bone is probably about that big, but having seen the bones in the landscape, then I started seeing landscape and bones as well. So, it's almost like a map-like image. When you shine the light through, you can see the details. It is quite map-like and river-like, or it could be tributaries or something. This one's also um, thinking about bone as material and how you know bones have been used over over the years to make things, <coughs> like things or homes or functional items. And that idea, I thought, well, can I actually make a reliquary out of bones? Instead of making a box to hold bones, I make a box out of bones themselves. You know, use bones material. And just looking at the shapes of the bones, what did they suggest? How could you use them? And bones kind of suggested the design, really, as I went along, because of the shapes of them. So I thought that was a really interesting process of how people have thought about bones. Um, this one, this is two years work, so there's loads of different ideas that went through. This one's called um, a reliquary for the last Ken Harrier's wishbone. So I'm trying to show you that it's about that big with gold leaf that I painted on. It's basically a sample box, um, so the bones in the bone lab were kept in these little plastic boxes. But this is kind of one for the future, this is a reliquary for the future, so when the last Ken Harrier dies, it's kind of thinking about extinction. That bone then becomes incredibly precious. So it needs a box to be kept in. So it's kind of thinking, you know, if something becomes extinct, those bones are all we have left. And that, in terms of value, that becomes an amazing, valuable item. Um, and finally, I started thinking about how archaeologists use different technologies to see things differently. Um, and just trying to scan the inside of bones and looking at the insides of things, um, which led me on to make a series of reliquaries that were made to be x-rayed, which is a really weird process because in our, as an artist you're usually trying to make something that's going to be seen from the outside and you're going to see the surface. Now I'm trying to make something that I know is going to be seen on the inside, so I'm trying to think what the materials will look like on the inside. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you can kind of see all the little screws and the little brass head. And, you, and we got some of the, um, the actual grain of the wood as well, which we didn't expect, it was really nice. Um, and then once you start putting bones inside the reliquary boxes and x-raying that, um, I called this one, this is a cat skull, so I called this one Schrodinger's cat. So it's kind of, <laughs> if, you know, if you know the experiment, um, it's actually being observed without opening the box. So. What does that mean? <laughs> it's not funny. Um, so, as I say, there's probably, I think I made about 30 different works over the time, um, exploring different ideas and creating an exhibition of about 17 of the works. Um, but in the exhibition space itself, I started playing with this, the, the way the space worked. Um, and I, you can see these sort of lines that I started placing them around the, the works in the space. Um, and it was an idea about trench cutting, but it was also about how things are categorised and linked up, so they're not always in the middle. Um, and the three in the middle are a set, but I thought, well, if you offset the set, it's more like how you might discover something, not actually related to the other things. Um, 
but also it kind of led you around the room visually. It's kind of the, it kind of moved you around the room because you kind of followed these lines. So sort of thinking of it as an installation as well. Um, and that's as far as I, I went with it. I'm sort of still making some works, but um, yeah, it's a lot of different ideas. And, and that's it. Thank you.